it's Monday. We have another very inspiring person to talk about today. And she is no other than Blessed Margaret of Castello. Blessed Margaret has such a remarkable story and I I have been trying my best to really see how I can do this justice because I am telling you she's one in a million one in a billion in fact Margaret's life started when her parents a very noble couple was hoping for a son so that they can pass down their name and pass down all of those things that they were very proud of as a family one day when Margaret's mom suddenly found herself pregnant her father threw a very elaborate feast you know just anticipating the birth of finally his son but Margaret came and obviously Margaret is not a boy and in fact when Margaret was born she was blind she was a hunchback she was a cripple one of her legs was shorter than the other about an inch and a half shorter and then she was also a dwarf so she was very small in stature and this greatly disappointed Margaret's parents who were expecting not just a boy but the perfect little boy and I guess in Margaret's life you can see that early on she already had to struggle she didn't even know anything about this world yet and yet she had to struggle she was kept in an area in their house where she was hidden from everybody's view and she was kept there until she was six years old where she was able to finally kind of creep out of the holding cell and her parents saw her talking to a lady and they were very upset about this they had a cell built beside a chapel that they owned deep into the forest this holding area this new holding area was four feet by four feet and it had a window this window is where the priest of that chapel went to see margaret to give her food and to give her words of god one of the most important things that this priest taught margaret whatever is physical is very temporary but whatever is within us our soul is what lives in all eternity and margaret understood that so well she dedicated her life to really understanding how she can be a better child of god after a while on the 13th year there was a threat of an invasion so margaret's father asked her mother to take a black cloth to cover margaret so that they can go to their other property and there they hid margaret under the plaza so her new confinement was in a dungeon far from everybody else nobody would visit her except for this person who was asked to feed her twice a day but in that dungeon margaret continued her prayers as she was doing this her parents heard about a miraculous healing somewhere in castello so they brought Margaret to Costello, hoping that she would be the beneficiary of all this healing. And they asked her, you know, Margaret, you've been prayerful, pray to your God. Her parents weren't really prayerful. And so they asked her, they asked her to beg God for healing. And so she did. But always after her prayer, she would say, but do unto me according to your will. She always referenced what God wanted for her because she knew that whatever God wanted for her in her life was always best for her. Long story short, she did not get healed. She was still a cripple, she, she was still a hunchback, she was still blind, and her parents were so frustrated, in fact, quite upset, because they felt like they were people who others didn't say no to, and they were so disappointed they left Margaret in Costello, never to see her again. You know who adopted Margaret? 
beggars. Beggars in the streets of Castello took her in and taught her how to live according to their ways. And so Margaret started begging for her food, for whatever she needed. But alongside this, she also taught children the Psalms. And she was never hostile. She was never sad or upset. This is one of those things that when I was researching her story really grabbed me. Because here was this person who had everything against her. But she was still joyful. She was still cheerful. She still shared love. She still gave as much of what she could give. And she had nothing but so much peace in her and so much joy and so much love. And she gave all of that for everybody and anybody who needed it. Margaret's piety and her grace drew a lot of people to her. She was able to pray for them and to teach them the faith. One time as she was begging along her other friends, it was winter and this was in Italy and it was very cold. One of the more richer families took pity on them and invited them to stay a night in their stable. And Margaret was overjoyed. Margaret was so happy that she started looking silly to her other friends because they were so upset they were asking her how can you be so happy when we're going to be in the stables and she said plainly you know my Jesus was born in the stable and tonight I am going to be able to live as he did and this was one of those things that was very apparent in Margaret's life. How she saw things so differently. How she saw everything as grace. How she saw the good in every single aspect, whether it was seemingly bad to other people she met. You could almost say that she was crazy, right? crazy but crazy in love crazy in love with our lord to be able to see that what she was going through was being used for the good of other souls because one of the things that that priest when she was younger taught her was that whenever you are humiliated whenever you are embarrassed whenever you feel the world is against you Think of how Jesus suffered. Jesus who never laid a hand on anyone, who never tricked anyone, who never even did bad to anyone. He was tormented. He was beat up. A lance pierced his side. And to end his life, he was nailed to a cross. And ever since, Margaret understood the value of suffering. We sometimes feel like our world is about to end because we're not getting our way. But look at the lessons. Look at what God is teaching you and telling you. Because whatever it is, there is still love there. There is still love. And so Margaret eventually joined a third order of the Dominicans. Here, she was able to ask them to join her to help prisoners who weren't getting any love or support. And so that became their little project. They would go visit the prisoners. They would tell them about the word of God. They would give them clothes and feed them and maybe nurse them if they needed some wounds healed. Margaret gave her life for God in her own little way she was not educated like a lot of the noblemen were even if she was born to a very rich family when Margaret eventually died the people were asking the priest you've got to bury her inside the church 
you have got to bury her inside the church this is how holy this person is give her that recognition and of course the priest was kind of hesitant because who is she really and so there was an argument outside of the church where this was happening and as this was going on a couple with a crippled daughter took this to be a sign to ask Margaret for her blessing to cure their daughter and they went closer to Margaret's body her lifeless dead body and prayed and their daughter was cured and there was no further arguments then the priest let them bury Margaret inside the church everybody knew without a doubt that this was a very holy person that this was a person favored by Jesus favored by God whom the heavens looked down so well on I hope that you guys find a way to learn more about Margaret of Costello she really is a, an amazing example for us as we go through life and its challenges and its trials and its difficulties a lot of times we're not sure where to go anymore but her story is teaching us today to just keep the faith to just keep the faith because whatever it is that you're going through God is using it for the good of others I hope I was able to introduce her to you well enough so that you can read more about her. Take care, guys, and enjoy your week. I pray that you all have a wonderful week ahead. It's the last week of October. It's almost November. The last two months till 2021 is upon us. Let's make the most out of it, guys.